Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Complete Physio podcast. My name's Chris Myers and I'm joined today by a friend of the show, Mr. Sam Singh, who is an extremely experienced foot and ankle surgeon that, and we've worked together for many years in London and shared lots of patients. And I'm really keen to do this podcast today because we're going to be talking about Morton's Neuroma. Now, Morton's neuroma is a very, very common condition, and we've shared lots of patients, and still do, yep. lots of patients with Morton's neuromas. Um, and obviously, it's something that you see... Very passionate about, Chris. Absolutely, for very surgery. Very passionate about. And it definitely seems to be one of those conditions where patients... But just to clarify, not just for surgery, Chris. We see it for because most of them can be managed without surgery. Absolutely, and we'll come so on we, to that, yeah, Sam. So, yeah, so it's not and, for surgery only. But yeah. it is one of those conditions where people seem to have a lot of questions. Absolutely. And it's and hopefully what we'll do is we'll cover some of those questions and yeah, give and people I think the it's, answers. It's, I totally go with it. Look, it's a very, um, it's a very strange condition. And why is it strange? Because I've been a consultant 18 years. I've given presentations and, and talks to big audiences and, and asked people, have you heard of Morton's Neuromas 18 years ago? And that, honestly, more than half the room would not have no idea what I was talking about. Whereas we've seen, with the advent maybe of the newer techniques for diagnosing it, and also with the change in activity pattern, that actually people are much more aware of it. So, a patient so you think it's getting more common? It. It's more common. And in yeah. fact, I think, you know, if you say plantar fasciitis is the commonest problem in the foot, the second commonest is probably Morton's neuroma, actually. It's remarkably common. And you personally... See well, loads. I yeah. will see at least five Morton's neuromas a week in clinic. Wow. It's that many patients coming through. And clearly, therefore, it is also a condition that people find debilitating. It is debilitating. It is, it is never... It is ne it's very rarely terrible. In some patients, it is terrible, mm. and they really can't walk, for example. But for other patients, it's just a nuisance. Mm. And it's not... It's, some t it's the kind of thing where you can do things... You can still do what you want, but you don't enjoy doing it anymore because it just becomes a bit unpleasant. Absolutely, and, and walking is walking often is what it affects. We exactly, and, we and we're all trying to do day. our step count. We're all trying to get up to our yeah. 10,000 steps a day. Yeah, yeah. And people feel it, and they feel it. And, and, and so, you know, we used to talk about, you know, what... So, you know, just like, what, how does it present? What symptoms yeah. might the patients have? So, yeah. um, textbooks always say, oh, or you know, a pebble in the shoe. Yeah. You know, feels like a rock feel under like the I'm thing. On I feel yeah. tingling in my toes. Now you can feel anything, but the the great way of saying it is one of my patients. I remember she came to me um, last week, and she was she said a beautiful line. She said, "I wish I could explain it better." She just couldn't explain it. Yeah, she just goes, "I've got this thing in my foot which I just can't put a. It's just there. Yeah. And it's that kind of vague discomfort. It can just be like a sometimes a tingling." Sometimes a bit of a burning. Sometimes people take their shoe off and check if they got something in the It can be quite thing. sharp. It can it? be sharp. Yeah. It can catch them on certain maneuvers. Yeah, yeah. Certain kind of um, you know odd steps can catch them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes you know more traditionally, it can feel like a pebble in the shoe. But yeah. you know, but that's less that that's less you know yeah, yeah. less common. But but if we simplify it, generally it is a sensation or a pain or a discomfort on the in the ball, ball of, of the, the foot. foot. And by yeah. ball of the foot, we mean sorry. The, not the heel. Yeah, but do you want to show them, Sam? There's yeah, so, a, a uh, yeah, over so, there. So by where we, so this is a model of a, of, a, of a foot. And what we're looking at here is the ball of the foot being this area kind of here. So underneath, underneath. The and typically patients will note it around the second and third. So toes. in the web space. In the web space around here, they'll feel discomfort. Mm. Sometimes tingling, numbness going into the toes. Yeah. They might say, well, I feel like a bit of a tingling, feel like a bit of a numbness. And that's the kind of thing that irritates them. Yeah, and you can get it in the other web spaces. You can you? get it. So you can only get it in the second or third web space I've in your foot. I've seen one in the on the floor. I, I'm going to have to question you on that. Uh, okay, I'm afraid. Fine. I'm but sure I have, I have seen a massive one from the third extend into the fourth because uh, of the way it shapes. Okay, oh, so the bursa goes under and goes. So, but it, it for all practical purposes, if I get a, a scan report saying it's in the fifth, yeah. never from you, Chris, but from no. others, I will say actually, can you rescan it? Because sure. so it's sure very it's common between in the, the second, second web and space and the third. Third and is the second the web space is between the second and the and third. And the third toes. and the second and third toe. So when you look at your uh, your um, your foot is going to be basically here, yeah. and this is the kind of area where they feel the so discomfort. So this is your big toe, big toe, so second toe, third, and this is where they feel the tingling, the awkwardness, the discomfort. But you're saying you can also see it in here, in here, the third. here or here, never here. Yeah. 
and never hear. Sure. But they often can't map the pain because you can't map it because it's just a bit vague and it's a bit hard to tell yeah, and yeah. something's not right. Yeah. And who's your classic, you know, person, age, male, Fine. female, who normally gets this? So it'll tend to be patients who are a little bit, often a bit more active. Yeah. So there's two very distinct cohorts. Now, um, Books would suggest that 90% are in females. That's not correct. Mm. Okay, that is not correct. No, we definitely we see, see it in, males. Uh, in yeah. males. And we do see it more than that. So yeah. it is still predominantly in females. But you must remember the classical causes of it, where you go into it, in terms of what associations do we have. Sure. How it happens, we really don't know. We don't understand. Or why know. it happens. We have an idea. Yeah. We have a suspicion, but we don't know exactly why it happens. Um, what's interesting is if you look at people's shoes, for example, like we used to they see that it was certainly associated with wearing high heels, or certainly. High heels and also... A narrow toe box. Without laces. Without because laces. they have to be a little Clawing bit tighter. The toes. Yeah, and also, so if you even if you're wearing a ballet pump and you're a lady, you have to keep... The way you keep the shoe on mm. is by scrunching your toes. Mm. Okay? If a man keeps a slip, slip on shoe, mm. he holds it by scrunching his toes. <laughs> so the first thing actually to do if your front of your toes hurt is to just change to something with laces. Slightly or a wider. Strap a yeah. wider and a strap across the ankle so your your toes get to chill out mm. and get to hang out yeah. a bit and not be kind of so constricted. Also, interestingly, there is, um, there's uh, some research that said that most of us wear shoes too small. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and certainly one test I always say to patients is next time you wear your shoes, stand up and just see if you've got a thumb width between the end of the shoe and the end of the first toe. And it's amazing and how many times will. they don't have and it. And do you know why, Chris? Because You're everyone... tell me. Everyone measured their feet when they were 18 years old and, and they bought the same again. size yeah. since then. So your foot size changes, yeah. your feet do become more flat as you get older. And the other thing is remember, particularly if you're a runner or if you walk a lot, your feet do swell a little Absolutely. bit as you do Absolutely. activity. Absolutely. So you've got to have a bit of give in yeah. the shoe. And there's at least a one size difference just from manufacturer to manufacturer. Mm. So just because you're a number nine with one company, yeah. it doesn't mean you won't be a 9.5 or a 10. And also another. we all try and fit into an eight or a nine. Of course but actually do. we could be an eight and a half. Absolutely. <laughs> and because it's cheaper, we get the eight. <laughs> yeah, or it's, it's the only one available <laughs> all the time. Or the only one available. And you, you don't can't do, be bothered to wait. The half sizes don't, yeah. aren't done in England, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you might even have two feet of a different size. Yeah. yeah. And what about age? I mean, I seem to see it in that, you know, over 40, yes. 40 yeah. to 60 years. So old it's uncommon female. in the under 30s. I have seen, I do see Yeah, it I've seen 30s, it too, yeah, yeah. But it is uncommon. It tends yeah. to be old, it older. Yeah. It tends to be older um, individuals. And possibly, again, because of a bit of, the, because of when we come to how it happens, you get a little bit of collapse of the transverse arch, yeah, yeah. which might Absolutely. be contributing to it. Also, a bit of activity as well. So the things are, the common activities, it happens with skiing. Yeah. Because ski boots need always too tight. Yeah. So the ski boot, it certainly happens with skiing. Yeah. Hiking, I find Hiking is quite common. Like a snug fit, but sometimes... Yeah, absolutely. Particularly when they then add their socks, which are normally quite thicker in... Exactly. You know, so and then they haven't sure accommodated for that in the size in of the, the sizing. Thing, because they want to yeah. use a boot in the summer as well as the winter. Yeah. So thick merino wool, the thick merino wool sock exactly. makes it tight. Absolutely. Yeah. I've seen it And in then your feet swell. Runners. Your muscles use, you know... Runners. So. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. Loads in runners. Yeah, yeah. They Obviously get, so it's really. a really common problem with runners. Yeah, yeah. And it's not surprising because they spend the whole life on the tip of their toes. They're smashing yeah, their foot. Smashing them forefoot. Yeah, yeah, their yeah. heels not hitting the ground, you know? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, so they're absolutely, they're um, uh, a big one in runners. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so, so, yeah. so we've talked about like who gets it and look, most people watching this probably think they've got it or they've been diagnosed yeah, absolutely. with it. So, so what is it? So what, what do is you the see neuroma? When yeah. you do surgery? So, so what is the neuroma? Okay, so let me, um, first thing is, it is a thickening or a damaged nerve like in the foot, like a scar fibrosis tissue fibrosis. fibrosis. The, yeah. And that's what we find. In fact, when we send to the lab yeah. for analysis, which I always do just to know that be reassured no, the patient, yeah. I've taken it all out and it's nothing else. I always find this, it's, that's what I find. We call it perineural fibrosis. You yeah. get a lot of the scar, the, ten, the nerve is irreversibly damaged. Yeah. Okay. So what, what, where do we find but, it? Hang on, let's just, before you scare people, but it's not. A, so first, yes. So two things. What's firstly, the role of it, it is not a tumor. Yeah. It is not a cancer. Mm. It is a completely innocent lesion, other than the fact it causes you discomfort. Right. So there is no, no, no mandatory reason to remove it. Mm. There is no reason to even to treat it, yeah. just because you have it. And a lot of people will have one, don't even know they have it. Up to 50% in some Absolutely. studies. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially MRI is notorious for picking up innocent neuromas that don't cause any symptoms yeah. or problems, okay? Yeah. Um, 
So first thing is, it is not a cancer, not a tumor, not something that has to be removed. It is just a nerve that's a little bit unhappy. Mm -hmm. Okay? And why is it unhappy? So we have a, a lot of thoughts and theories, but... What I do see, and I'm going to try and explain with this very basic model. So firstly, this is the model of the foot, and this is from the top. So what we see is that we've got something called a, li the, a ligament called the intermetatarsal ligament, which runs between the bones. And what happens is underneath that ligament, we have a, all have a small nerve. Which is called the intermetatarsal Inter digital, digital nerve. nerve. Yeah. Yeah. And that nerve, Chris, has got very little function in life. So it's this a sensory nerve. Sensory isn't nerve. It? It's massively overrated. Okay? <laughs> okay. Massively overrated what it does. All it Hence does. Hence you're happy to cut them out. Cut them out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because people go, oh well, I've cutting a nerve out. Of course I wouldn't cut out the nerve that moves your leg yeah. or the, you know, or the nerve that supplies your blood or something. You know, yeah. That's big. <laughs> but this nerve's function is only one thing, and that is to supply the sensation between the toes. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit of sensation under the metatarsal. Yeah. So if you do take it out, people all do you do lose is get sensation. numbness there, yeah. and you get numbness between your toes, and not the whole toe being numb, no. just between where the shadow is when you stand. And your patients generally don't really notice. No that one care cares, for it, do they? But the internet because there is full. also overlap. But with the, the internet yeah. and yeah. Doctor Google, Googleitis is full of nonsense. Yeah. Nonsense about the implications of losing the sensation right. if a nerve is taken out. It, uh, I have to date and I have done several thousand nerve surgeries to remove the neuroma. I have never to date had a patient who is bothered by the numbness. Yeah. I'm not saying all the patients are happy no, with the surgery, no, but, that's but the numbness say, yeah. the numbness is not an issue. Yeah. So I up, get really upset <laughs> clearly, online Sam, clearly, clearly when I see nonsense about how will you cope with this numbness. Yeah. And it's because people are trying to promote. It's a natural question. Thing. Yeah, but is the numbness is not an great. issue. Okay. okay. Maybe if you're an Arctic explorer, maybe you need that sensation to get to minimise the risk of frostbite. Okay. That's possibly the. Yeah, okay. okay. You've I thought about that. Thing. I have thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because okay. I was once asked by an someone. Arctic explorer yeah, yeah. said, "Hey, what about?" I said, "Uh, uh, it's uh, probably still be fine." Yeah, Because yeah. the rest of the toe you can feel. Okay. Okay. So, so the so nerve runs. Yeah. So the nerve runs in that gap, and what happens is basically this is my great analogy. The nerve is the thickness, exact thickness, of uncooked spaghetti, okay? So this is uncooked spaghetti. Do it from the front, Sam. Well, front, front, front. Okay, imagine it's underneath there, okay? Or turn so, it around. Yeah, so that's your uncooked spaghetti. And that nerve runs under this ligament. And under the ligament, as it rubs and gets irritated, which is why, Chris, you can understand the runners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the people who are wearing yeah, yeah. tight shoes. Yeah. Those who are dancing a lot, for example. Yeah. Their toes are, are more stretched. Yeah. Those do a lot of yoga. Okay? Right, yeah, yeah. Doing a lot more natural, that? unnatural of movements of toes. Bending, a lot of bending yeah. it this way, that way. The nerve gets rubs against here. And as it continuously Just rubs... turn it around, Sorry, Sam's I'll turn around. Sorry, it'll be easier. So as the nerve... from the uh, other yeah. side. Oh, yeah, there sorry. We go. <laughs> as the nerve here rubs against this ligament here, it's normally meant to be very small. Okay? And that won't trouble you. But what happens is that nerve then becomes... A little piece of fusely. 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 It looks like fusely. When you yeah. take it out, it looks like it becomes like a so fusely. It thickened. thickened and like a, a thing. And we'll yeah. show you a photo of that, but it becomes like a thickened lump in the ball of the foot. Right. And it's that. So it takes pasta. up more space. Yeah, it's that yeah. nerve. So whenever now you flex this foot, that is like my finger being stuck. Right. The nerve gets caught. Right. And that's why they get the pain. Yeah, and that's what the issue is. And one of the things that we recommend before surgery or injections is that they actually get a shoe that's got quite a rigid forefoot. Yes, and so there's less bending of and the therefore thing. less because irritation. Because again, if we're bending the toes, then yeah. you're finding I've got a slightly more flexible model here to show you. So as you bend your toes, what you find is you are stretching the nerve at that point there. Yeah, and actually the nerve, the best way to see it is. It is basically like my finger. Right, okay. Now, it was meant to be a piece of spaghetti. But it's okay? got thicker. But it's got thicker. So that nerve, which is meant to be a piece of spaghetti, oh. has got thicker and has become like the tip of my finger so. or like the piece of fusilli sure. in your foot. So and he, that's the problem. It's taking up too much space. Absolutely. Yeah. 
But that's what the neuroma looks like. It looks like that. That's how big yeah. they often are. Now, what, let's go on to now. Oh. So alternative, because I would yeah. say that could happen in nerves somewhere else. But it doesn't matter. Well, it, it does happens, happen elsewhere. It does happen yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't bother you. Yeah. If it happened well, around, you know. You just don't see them. You don't see them. You I don't see, see foot and ankle. Foot and ankle. Absolutely. Yeah. It does happen. Other, but the other thing is you can get away with it. But that's the only nerve that you walk on every step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go to the corridor. You, you, yeah. you, you just go yeah. out the front door. You've done 20 Squashes of the nerve already. So that's a neuroma. The other, the other diagnosis that people may have heard Absolutely. of is a bursitis. Yeah. So talk to me about the, what it is, so, the relationship. So a bursa is a natural thing we all have in our foot. Yeah. It is a shock absorber. It's a, little, it's a little pad of tissue with a bit of fluid in it that's like a little silicon gel. And it helps movement, it helps doesn't it, movement between structures. And movement structures, and it helps us stop the bones from loading so much. Yeah. Bursas are great. We couldn't do well in life without a bursa. Mm. But when a bursa goes rogue... So when it gets inflamed and becomes a bursitis... Then bursitis, yeah. then it's a real pain in the... Yeah, and they, they often go... The foot. Yeah. They often go hand in hand with a neuroma, don't they? They do. But they can also exist Because separately. the etiology, if you think we're talking about the fact that the nerve is being loaded badly, yeah. then the bursa is formed by... The tissue gets inflamed when the tissue's loaded badly or yeah, the bone's yeah. loaded badly. Yeah. So the whole thing kind of in cahoots. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go on to diagnosis. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk through how you would make this diagnosis. And it's probably worth talking about the pros and cons of each of those methods as well. So let's start with you, the clinical diagnosis, so, which but, yeah. essentially is you poke in the area. So there is a very, the clinical diagnosis done can be very accurate. Mm. Okay. And we can't yeah. underestimate that. Yeah. And in fact, I know that in my hands, mm. the clinical diagnosis mm. is more accurate than the MRI diagnosis for definite. Mm. And is similar to the ultrasound diagnosis. Absolutely. Because okay? you've seen so many that I know I can pick it up. So yeah. I will examine a patient. And I often say to him, you've got a neuroma or not. Yeah. I might back and it up. And you're 99% sure. 99% yeah. sure. But there can be other things. Yeah. So just briefly, some other things that can mimic it. Mm -hmm. So you might have a stress fracture. Mm -hmm. But they'll give a different story. If we use a shorter history. Yeah. There might be some swelling on the top of the, along the bone. You might get inflammation in the joints. Mm. So I'll check for those. So you might get what we call capsulitis, especially the second toe. If they've got, for example, a bunion or they've got yeah. a long second toe, that can mimic it. Uh, or, something, or some rare things like a plantar plate tear. Yeah. So obviously we check for those. But let's just assume for the moment common things are common. Yeah. And we are just going down the right. So we, any clinician's job is to exclude other things. Absolutely. And part of the reason we do the scan as well. Yeah. So the diagnosis is very easy. And what, the, what we'll do is we'll look at your hand and basically we'll be squeezing in the web space. And as we squeeze, we basically that fusily. And from the top and the bottom. And the bottom we're squeezing. squeezing. So I'm pincer gripping like I'm a claw. I'm yeah. pincer gripping. And then what I'm doing is I'm side squashing. Yeah. So I'm doing a four-way death. <laughs> death. <laughs> squeeze. Okay. Squeeze. So imagine this is the foot. First I'm squeezing there, Chris. Yeah. That squeezes it. And then what I do is if I squash it from the side as well, then the metatarsal bones Squeeze are also it. being squeezed. And they go, ouch, ouch. don't do that and again. And that's lovely. <laughs> they talk about something called a Mulder's click. Yeah. It is very rare. Sure. Okay. So the Mulder's click, absence of a Mulder's click, and this is a mistake some patients feel, that they've been bounced around a bit because there has no click. They've been told it's not a neuro. Mulder's click is only in a massive... And that's one. when you squeeze the foot and, and you, you hear, hear a click, click, click. click. Yeah, yeah. And it's only... In and also your foot can click for other reasons. For other reasons, In fact, yeah. you so, can generally so make it is the least click. specific of all. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, so, so if you have a Mulder's click, then it's a good sign that yeah. it's... Uh, um, uh, neuroma. And neuroma. But the 90% of people don't have a model. No, and, and I've, my experience is that other things click as well. Yeah, exactly. So, Absolutely. Okay, so let's say that you clinically have diagnosed somebody with a, a, neuroma. a neuroma. You're obviously then going to give them what we would call the, the conservative, conservative treatment. Which we just recap, we yeah. discussed, you um, can try wider shoes. Yeah. You can try longer, longer shoes, shoes yeah. make sure the shoes are correct size. Yeah. Uh, a softer shoe sometimes helps. Yeah. Chris said a good thing, maybe using a stiffer shoe can help because you're not bending the toes as much. Yeah, or a slightly rocker shoe, rocker, like the hocker yeah. shoe. So or you're, the you're rolling as you walk. So you're having okay. to use your toes less. Let's to you, yeah. yeah. And if you're moving away from a, a kind of a, a ballet pump to a strappy sandal, which mm. is so the straps keep the shoe, shoe on. Yeah. So you're, you're basically, you let, all you're trying to do is let your, imagine you're letting your, your, feet have sweatpants have sweatpants 
You know, okay. it's comfy, a weekend, comfy, comfy pants. Yeah, okay. You know, comfy pants. So they're a bit looser. Yeah. They're a bit wider. Yeah. You know, you're not having to wear a bit more protection ready, underneath. A bit more protection. Your classic yeah. thing is either it's it's females that wear or males that wear high heels. Yeah. Um, uh, and men as well. Yeah, my, yeah. Italian patients have lovely narrow pointy yeah, leather shoes yeah, yeah. with very hard leather soles. They do. Uh, Converse All Stars, oh. ballet pumps. I, so um, those all those also, shoes give me good business. They give so you Converse good business, but like gives, Nike free, you know, the very light. Yes, it's too light. It's yeah. too light. Mm. And, the, and 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 my bugbear, you know, sketch is too flexible. And just leather. Yeah, you can get a you can get a rocker bottom sketcher that or yeah. a hocker that are quite good. But what I would say is, although obviously all the manufacturers of the shoes say, well, this is the best for that, it's often personal preference. It's and actually, if it feels better, it, exactly. it probably is better. And also width of the shoe. But I think width and length are probably the, t if and I had a new yeah, absolutely. I would do that And then first. that will often be enough. Yeah, and leather, blokes, brown leather shoes, I don't know why I said brown, but mine always brown. With a leather sole, don't give you much protection no, at all. Now, no. you can get a couple of things you can add to your shoe. So there's something called a metatarsal pad. Yep. Or even just a simple sorbethane insole yeah, exactly. just can a bit help more for shock absorption. And sometimes they little call a silicon toe crest, yeah. where you have a little kind of bar that goes across there. That's yeah. an easy one. You can try it. And it's remember, worth trying. And yeah. remember, some of it's inflammation. Hmm. Some of it is maybe a bit of bursitis, squashing yeah. the nerve. Yeah. So this burst of squashes the nerve. Yeah, they yeah. live on top of one another. Yeah, so so they, it's like, I always say the bursts give you the nerve a wedgie. You know, it's just squashing him, you know? He's like, in agony. You've done this job too long, the, Sam. The nerve, the nerve <laughs> Analogy like, for everything. Yeah, there's, it's just it's like even giving a wedgie, you know? It's just like yeah. he's squashing the nerve. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes just taking a bit of pressure off the yeah. bursa will help it as well. Yeah, absolutely. So the other thing is we work very closely with our podiatrists at Complete, and um, I've certainly had a lot of success, or some success, and the problem is you don't know who it will be successful will be, on, yeah. uh, with, with customised orthotics Absolutely. to try and offload that area. And also to correct the way their foot works generally because Absolutely. it's not uncommon that these people have something called a drop metatarsal arch Absolutely. or they're overpronators, or they're Or they're, their, or they're yeah. le loading their lesser metatarsals much yeah, yeah. more than their big toe. Yeah. So you can redistribute well, the Well, you weight. definitely see it in patients with bunions and big toes that are painful Absolutely. because they're offloading. And that's offloading. a common association with the Morton's neuroma. Yeah. So I think podiatry can provide, certainly if you're looking at conservative measurement yeah. before, me measures before considering say Absolutely. for example injection and also just from a from a physiotherapy perspective yeah. as well because we there are things that can, that can yeah, be so done length, calf, trying to stretch yeah. the calf so the calves also, and so just to recap yeah. chris you know the calf tightness means that you're if you especially if you want heels a lot yeah your calf muscle becomes short and as you walk more you basically your large you're part of loading. the walking cycle is on the ball of the foot yeah so again you're you're yeah. not letting your neuroma chill out. No, exactly. And, and we do lots of calf stretching, calf boards, but also we do some strengthening of the arches and yeah, the absolutely. intrinsics of the foot. And we certainly find that by strengthening the foot, um, it can help. But often it's that multimodal approach. So yes, you're going to do some physio. Yes, you may see a podiatrist or change something with your shoes and throw a few, few things at it, probably not at once, so you know what works uh, and see if you can get absolutely. some improvement. Exactly. Stage-wise, try each thing. If there was one thing that fixed all, then we would never need to do anything further. No. But it's but it, but even a thirty percent success rate of a simple mm. treatment mm. is a, is an yeah. acceptable success yeah. rate yeah. because we're not doing anything invasive yeah. yet. So let's just finish up the diagnostic. So we know MRI is good, but we know it doesn't pick up everything. It doesn't pick up everything. And we know that ultrasound and it's also expensive. Yeah, and but we know ultrasound, which is it's, obviously what I do a yeah, lot. No, no, but ultrasound is great. Yeah. So I will not. I only trust the ultrasound on a neuron. Yeah. I don't bother with well, MRI. That's why you send me so okay? many. I know. I do not have any. Uh, interest in yeah. MRI and, and I'll say from an ultrasound point of view that ultrasound that you have is only as good as the person that operates yeah, absolutely. it I see loads and therefore I think I'm pretty good but 10 years ago I didn't see so many I probably wasn't as good absolutely so absolutely. you've got to see the right person um, so, and, and then, the other thing is we said that a doctor can't, I can't read the ultrasound no so I have to trust no, what you've no. written and therefore, it has to be someone by someone yeah. I trust. But the ultimate investigation, unfortunately, is not until you go in and have a look. Absolutely. You, you can sometimes but, but, have... But I... Stop. Yeah. I will never go in and have a look. No. Okay. Okay? Because I've, I will rescan it. Or yeah, yeah. I'll say to someone who's good at scanning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will not miss it in ultrasound. So, no, so I think the only thing I'd say about ultrasound is that sometimes it can underestimate the size of the neuromas. It, it, but but at least you know it's there. We know it's there. All yeah. I want to know is that this is not a normal That foot. when you go in, you haven't wasted At some time. time because yeah. we do not want to operate unless we no. know something's there. Okay. So so the first thing before we dive in about tomorrow's surgery, obviously there is a role for injections. Okay. Yeah, so let's say that somebody, you've got to try all the conservatives Absolutely. stage one first and give that some time. Give it three months. If that doesn't work and we're happy with the diagnosis, then an ultrasound guided 
steroid injection or I mean generally it's going to be steroid because it's Ste yeah, so steroid is, well no steroid so I've been in London when the fad was well the craze was for glucose injections then there was then there alcohol was alcohol injections cryotherapy yep the chap who did all the alcohol injections disappeared out of the country because it alcohol is terrible in the foot okay yeah. be giving people trying other random things to try and kill the the yeah. neuroma are terrible yeah. because giving someone 80% alcohol concentration which is stronger than what you have on a good night out okay <laughs> is going to burn the tissue in the foot in yeah. other ways okay yeah. so th there's a lot of other collateral damage yeah. done to the foot so alcohol injections absolutely no yeah. glucose injections no people trying different things no, no. steroid is not fully effective no. but it's got a but the meta analysis of all the data that's been out there which was only published about two years ago. And a meta-analysis, just so that those for listeners, so that it's basically when you pull the data from every study that you've got. And I'd be honored to say the surgical technique is written by me in that study, oh, okay? Yeah, just so you know, yeah, yeah, the one that's yeah, done, you know, yeah. in the, many years ago when I yeah, wrote yeah. it, but it's the same one. That, that's that, that's yeah. what I use the basis for that. And same with the tarsal tunnel, it's, written, yeah. so it's good. Just to tell you, yeah, yeah. plug, but that's fine. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so all that data gets put together and then someone says, you know what? These things work. So yeah. the success rate for the steroid injection is 45% on that study, yeah, yeah. on the meta-analysis. Yeah, yeah. And actually, so you'll say to me, well, why am I having a success a procedure that's 45? Because actually, if the next step is much bigger, then, you then actually be, it's not a bad And success. you're part of that 45%. You're 45, I, okay. I think 50-50 is it's, reasonable. It's not a bad risk. I think, I think it's higher than that, but it doesn't always last for long. And Absolutely. obviously that analysis would yeah. look at more long-term yeah. outcomes. I think, I think it's important for people to remember that when we do the injection, we're doing it therapeutically to Absolutely. help the pain, but also if it helps, even if it's for a short period of time, then it does indicate that it is coming, the pain is coming from that area, Absolutely. which can help with surgical planning Absolutely. and consideration. The other nonsense which I don't like is this word about course of injections. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Because course yeah. of injections is totally... You is, do one. It, it's, it's, an, it's in all the American literature. It's, it's, a, it's a, the American three, podiatrist. Yeah, he's, he's making him money. Call you yeah, back yeah. three times. Yeah, yeah. You don't have one injection, you have to have three. Yeah, yeah. If it didn't work the first time, Ain't gonna work the second time. I totally agree. Okay. That doesn't mean you wouldn't have a second injection a year down the line Absolutely. or something if it's and come it, back. If but. it's come back, but if it works, but if it was totally ineffective the first time, mm. why would you do it a second time? Mm. But it, but if it helps one time, up to two or three injections are safe. Mm. After that, we're a little bit careful because mm. you can get some, and you do notice people have had the injections. They can after three injections, they get a little bit of what we call atrophy of the fat. It, it doesn't, but also every every steroid injection, uh, I find it has a, a reducing effect yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. So actually, your third won't work like your first um but i think certainly if i had a neuroma i'd do all the stuff we said i would go for a uh, for an injection yep. just to see if it helped which it may and Absolutely. i manage I, i'd have an I'd have injection I, I manage many yeah. people successfully Absolutely. with that i've got um, just a few points on injection so we all know so patients don't get shocked yeah you do get a bit more pain for one or two days sometimes yeah the steroid yeah, yeah. flare in uh, neuroma injection is probably higher than it is in i joints. warn them of that yeah, yeah i say it can last for up to a week yeah it yeah. can and they get a bit more pain they go what the hell i'm worse and and also I know the other end because I have to follow them up. It does not give an effect in two weeks. I have to allow four to six weeks before I am even interested in knowing if it's helped or not. Okay, okay? Fine. so yeah. I don't think injections yeah. work in two weeks. People think yeah. they do. Some, I'd say, Some I say I would say a majority do, but but a, I don't. But a I don't think I don't call it a, a, as in it didn't work until. Yeah, yeah. Four to six weeks. Totally agree. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. I'll get an email from a patient saying, oh, I'm still not feeling better. Just wait. You know, I said, yeah. just wait. Just please yeah. wait a little bit, you know? Yeah. And, and then you know. If it's not worked in six weeks, it yeah. hasn't worked. Okay? So what, a lot of the patients I see that you send me and from, from other people is that, you know, we do an injection. They're very happy to try an injection and see how they get on. But there's definitely a percentage of people, maybe absolutely. because their neuroma is quite big yeah. or just that they don't respond and it's very hard to predict who will and who won't are then thinking about maybe having surgery. So Absolutely. do you want to talk us through the group of patients that we're talking about so, there and, yeah. so, and what you do? So the patients that I... Um, so the first thing is I wouldn't operate on you unless you had symptoms for at least six months. Right, okay. Because I have a cohort of patients who just it goes away. Yeah, yeah, that's okay? true. Yeah. And they do get better. Yeah. They've changed their shoes or they've changed the precipitating or they've stopped doing ultramarathons and they're getting better, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. So there's a, so I certainly wouldn't operate for at least six months of symptoms, okay? Oh, yeah. We never say never. Sometimes there'll be someone with a massive neuroma that you just didn't know yeah, about yeah, it. Sure. But I generally say six months, okay? And ideally even up to sometimes up to a year. So they've yeah. got the symptoms. And most people aren't desperate for and that And they're not desperate. Because it's anyway. not an agonizing. It's, it's uncomfortable, but it's not agonizing. Yeah. But surgery is effective. Mm. And, I, and, and one of the things that really still upsets me mm. that 
there is a lot of myths about the surgery. Sure. And there's a lot of incorrect information out there about the surgical yeah. outcomes. The surgical out surgery, if it's done well, it is successful. Okay? Mm. It has to be done well. Mm. And so talk to me about that. So essentially you chop out the nerve. We, no. <laughs> yes. Okay, talk yes. to me But this is very important. So you have to take out the fusilli. Yeah. But it is not just the fusilli. What is it? It's a growth in the nerve. Mm. So the biggest problem that happens with surgery and the biggest worry for me and for everyone is something called stump neuroma. Stump neuroma, so yeah. So you know a stump neuroma is when the nerve regrows. And it and it's normally bigger. It's normally it's normally bigger one. or it can be painful. Yeah, yeah. So I get so every time we cut the nerve in someone's body, they will get a stump neuroma. Mm. Okay? You get one. Because it's so how you heal. It's how you heal. The nerve tries to sprout a new nerve. Mm. So I get patients come to say to me, you know, so Mr. Singh, you know, I've heard you're the guru of uh, Morton's neuroma. You've done the probably large number in a large number in the UK. You know, are you, you know, what's your instance of stump neuroma? I'd say probably 100%. But if you analyze the nerve on a microscope, but functionally, mm. I don't want them to have a symptomatic stump neuroma. And that's generally also a, they're bigger, aren't they? They're bigger. Yeah. And, and therefore, the, the nerve, what is done wrong surgically mm. is that people take it out thinking it is this little piece of, it's this little piece of, oops, sorry, pasta. Yeah. Okay? Out, that one's out. Yeah, take but it. what you've got to do is you've got to take the pasta with a length of normal so nerve. So some of the normal nerve. Some of the normal nerve has to go with it, Okay. Because unless you take the normal nerve... So you've got to go down the foot. A down bit, the foot. Or up the foot. Up the, the foot. Ankle. And then when you cut it, then of course they'll form a nerve, but it's not in the Space. ball of the foot. It is in the mm. arch of the foot. Yeah. So it's out of the way. Out of the way. Yeah. So how do I, in my practice, get that to work? So mm. my patients initially have a slightly harder recovery because I've gone, I've done a tiny incision but I've trained myself to a keyhole incision to go all the way down into the mm. foot. Okay, a small incision, I can get to the bottom of the foot. So they have a small incision of about a centimetre at about the top? About a one and a half centimetre, yeah. okay? Let's say at the top. But from that, I've got the right instruments to go all the way down. Mm. But I unpluck the nerve deep in the arch. Mm. Now, why is the arch, why the arch, Chris? Why the arch? Why the arch? You're going to tell me. I'm going to tell you. Oh, I thought you might know the answer. Oh, why the arch? To do with where because the where, do we, where do we load? Oh, okay, yeah. We load there. Yeah. If you get a stump neuroma here, it doesn't bother you. Mm. The only time you notice is if you go to Thailand and you've got that person on the beach coming and giving you a massage. <laughs> yeah. They'll find it. Okay? <laughs> you go, whoa, what the hell, man? Yeah, yeah. But I thought you don't, fixed it. You thought <laughs> you fixed it. But they're in the arch, if you really do deep massage, you find it. But you won't. It'll be away from the ball right. of foot. So what I also have is quite a, a practice, which I've, unfortunately no one wants to have this practice, is of doing revision cases. Of other yeah. people found me yeah. online or on the thing is because they say, oh, you're the neuroma guys. They find you. And then they... They come and ask, you know, well, what about the stump neuroma? And actually, I'd love to say that the stump neuroma to take out are very difficult, but they're not. Mm. Because often they'll have been done by someone who mis has misunderstood, you could say, the pathology and thought it's just about removing the lump here. Mm. It's not. So actually, I go in, I just find another, the stump neuroma is just a millimeter yeah. away from it's, where it's it back been. in the back problematic in space. Yeah, so, yeah. hence a few things. So, for example, mm. I firmly believe this is an operation to do under general anesthetic. Mm. I can do I can do your bunion under local anesthetic, mm. but the neuroma because I've done a few under local mm. and patients jump when you so cut their nerve. Well, nerve However much it? you anesthetize yeah, yeah, yeah. it, they are off. The, they yeah. are you know. If you, you ever do it on me, it put me please, to sleep. Please sleep. Yeah. Ten minute, fifteen minute operation, fifteen okay. minute operation, sleep done. Perfect. You know? So you've taken out the neuroma. Yeah. So then they've got a little bit so of numbness between the toes. Yeah. They have a little bandage on their foot. They walk around with a. They can full weight bear because it's not really in the weight bearing. Do they bearing use bearing. crutches? Do they, they have don't a, need to a shoe on? No, they have a hard shoe, hard shoe to protect yeah. them just for the bandages, really. Yeah. And then after about two weeks, they go into the trainers. Yeah. Okay. They, so they, they find the toes a little bit clawed. Yeah. For a while, not forever. Yeah. They find it a little bit funny. And because to get to the nerve properly, you need to release the ligament that holds the bones together. The, the intermetatarsal. Intermetatarsal. They get a little bit of altered loading of the foot. Right. In nearly all patients, that will settle down. Mm. In some, it can be a problem. Yeah. You might need to add an orthotic or insole later, okay? Okay, yeah. The nerve pain goes, but they get a little bit of a different discomfort yeah. in a small amount. That's the main... And how, would, how long would you expect somebody to be limping for bef after the surgery? They're, 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 they're fine. You, if I'm honest with you, yeah. the majority are fine. Yeah. I'll tell you who doesn't do as well. And I, uh, So for me, what if I see a solitary neuroma, I see a patient's had an ultrasound or I've examined them, 
and I think there's a neuroma in the second or the third web space yeah. only, they do well. The patients who have one in the second and the third web space. Yeah. Would you normally take them both out or it's hard to? I'm a bit loath sometimes to. Yeah, yeah. I, ideally, I just take one out because yeah. they, they find that the awkwardness of the numbness yeah, is I more. Can imagine, yeah. Because then the middle toe can feel a lot more numb. Yeah, yeah. And it's a bit more noticeable, yeah. a bit less reversible. So if you... If, if I was to have surgery today, you would say that you know it's going to be sore for a couple of weeks, but then you should be walking around okay. You should be a couple of weeks. So it's it, not a ma you get an odd pain after the operation compared to other pressure to the nerve. Yeah, yeah. So you you'd be doing nothing and one yeah, go yeah. oh oh yeah, god yeah. and then you know you can't even control the pain because yeah, yeah. it just comes and it's like yeah. a, oh it's gone. I think from a physio point of view, I think they're walking around well at two weeks, but obviously their step count is way down. Isn't yes, it? yes. So it's I think it's important for people to know that to get back to their well it depends how good they were before, yeah. but it's going to take four to six weeks. It is absolutely, isn't it, really? but I've confidently got patients and even on my kind of you know my who write on my website and stuff about yeah. there that, who have actually done running at six weeks yeah, yeah. You know, they got back to running yeah, yeah, at six yeah. weeks because yeah. remember they're in pain before yeah so yes their foot feels different yeah but, and are you destroying the foot but no you're not really because once your scars healed and your tissue settling yeah. down, you can start exercising more. what about recurrency rate Rec so so symptomatic I assume they could symptom come of course they can so the chance of a, a a neuroma growing back after an operation that needs attention is about 10 percent mm. and of that this that's is, not a stump neuroma that th that is, no, just, that is, that a is a stump. A, you could say all oh, happy success rates a big all, stump yeah, neuroma 10 yeah. percent yeah. yeah about 10 percent but of which only five percent will need surgery yeah, so some sure. will settle down or some yeah, yeah. have it will say you know it's not too much of a problem yeah. i know it's there but i think you know that's with the nerve regrowing back yeah. success rates from the operation are definitely about 85 to 90 percent and not yeah, less yeah. than that okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a small operation but I've seen you do it, yeah, and, and you, it's pretty quick. Yes. I mean, it looked very straightforward. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense, because the nerve looks like a piece of pasta. Yeah. I think this, the thing is, although it looks very simple when you do it and that sort of thing, I think people, if they're going to have surgery, they do need to plan that they are going to be Absolutely. debilitated to a certain Absolutely. extent for a Absolutely. period of time. And it is a, any yeah. operation on the foot. Yeah. It's the only operation you walk on. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you, know you can have your shoulder done, not do anything with yeah, it. You'll yeah, be yeah. fine. You just use yeah. your other hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. but you can, you know, you type with the fingers. You know, but the problem with the foot, and people forget, is every time we operate, you yeah. walk, you walk to the loo after your operation. Yeah. And on, you've on walked the area. On, the, on the area we did the operation. Yeah, yeah. And the That's neuroma, Chris, we forget the neuroma we cut is always on the top. Yeah. It's terrible cutting from the bottom because you get an awful scar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, I always cut, nearly everyone in England cuts from the top now. Okay, so if someone's talking about cutting from the bottom, start thinking, have they done enough? Because mm. most people haven't, will yeah, not yeah. go from the bottom. So if you cut from the top, you go all the way down and the wound and the neuroma is just under the skin. Right, so it's actually so very, close, very, to very floor, close to the floor, but you have to go from the top. I have to go from the top. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't Which go makes to the sense why you get pain on the sole yeah. of your foot. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that's perfect, Sam. I think we've covered all the I points. So, yeah. I know you're more than happy for people to contact you. Yeah, if absolutely. Got any if they've got any queries or any burning questions, you know, I'm more um, than happy. You know, I think we've, you know, we talked about some of the risks and benefits. But, but yeah. I, the key thing I think I, that to take on message is: look, it is very common. Yeah. If you're worried or you might have one, then it's again vague. It's very hard to put a finger on what, what the symptoms are. Mm -hmm. um, the treatment options you try your simple things first. If yeah. you want, you can try wider shoes, softer yeah. shoes, stiff sole shoe. Um, the thumb test on thumb your shoe. Thumb test on your yeah. shoe, yeah. So Chris is saying you leave a bit of space at the end. Yeah. And try those things. Sometimes it can make a difference. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think they do actually yeah. in the majority of people the majority, because they're the ones we don't see. We don't see. They get yeah. better. And, and, and it is often a self-limiting condition, so it will actually go away. It's, mm. And it's not a tumour or a cancer that has to be cut out. It can mm. be left alone mm. as long as you can manage the symptoms. Mm. But if you don't manage the symptoms, then we come in, we're, we're to help. You know, whether it's a, a injection yeah. or uh, once you've got an accurate diagnosis, you can inject it. Yeah. Uh, Under and, ultrasound and, guidance. Uh, yep. Or, 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 or vice versa. Yeah, if yeah. you've, I sometimes, as you know, I don't yeah, I yeah, inject yeah. them myself. Yeah. But that's because I. Well, you, I think the benefit. But that's of the because you told me where it is. Yeah. Uh, but the benefit of the ultrasound guided injection is that you get the ultrasound done before. As I said, that's why. So I told so, uh, exactly. So, but also, you know, but, but you've also told me where it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's in the same look. So, yeah, yeah. so, but then if and if that doesn't help, yeah, then you have an option then. That we can do, for example, we can um, uh, we can take it out, yeah, yeah. and we don't need to rush to take it out. Yeah. But if your symptoms aren't getting better, please don't read the, a lot of rubbish on the yeah, internet. Yeah. Rubbish on the internet is published by, by people who are trying to promote their new technique, mm. which would be things like freezing. Yeah. You know, I have very few patients report success from mm. their cryotherapy. Yeah. You know, it's expensive, yeah. and and it damages the nerve irreversibly. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to remove the nerve after, I'm not too bothered. 
Yeah. But if you're not going to remove your nerve, then you still have pain, you've damaged right, your nerve okay, by yeah, burning yeah, it. Yeah, okay? yeah, cool. So it's it's okay if I'm going to cut it out later, but if I'm not going to cut it out, it's, big, yeah. it's potentially a big problem. And those yeah. other nerve surgeons walk away from it and say, I'm not touching you if you had the cry. Sure. Cry okay, so freezing it is, there's a variable, and you know, there's only, the fact that there's only a couple of places in Britain that do it means it's not really been, sure. been yeah. established. But a lot of the stuff is, so a lot of stuff in the internet, you know, stick to the UK literature, it's fairly accurate. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's, more, it's more kind of, you know, it's, it's, more patient-centered, you know. Yeah. And if they have any worries, then, you know, obviously that's what we're here for. Brilliant. Help them out with. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. Love, lovely. Thank you for the invite, Chris. No, no problem at all. Cheers.